Hey guys, it's Robsy, back with Paperless X, a channel that is all about digital productivity. In today's video, we'll be going through the free version of Adobe Acrobat Reader for the iPad. If you're new to our channel, hello. Make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications so you know each time we release a new video. And if you're already subscribed, fantastic human, welcome back. Adobe Acrobat Reader is a free PDF reader on the iPad, but it has in-app purchases for Pro features. You can download it on your iPhone, iPad, Android, Mac, and Windows. Acrobat Reader has several pricing options. Chances are you'll find what works for you. But this review focuses on the free version of Adobe Acrobat Reader. You can open documents to work on from different cloud services that you signed into or browse in files. Acrobat Reader can open several kinds of file formats, PDF, presentations, videos, Word documents. With all of these formats that are not PDF, you can only view them. You can't interact with them in any way. Acrobat does not import your documents into the application. It only accesses them from their location and annotates them from there. On this iPad, there is a lot of recently opened documents, but most of them don't appear under on this iPad. This is the tab that shows you all the documents saved locally on the iPad. When you want a copy of a document on your iPad, you have to save a copy and choose where you want to save it. This free version does not convert your documents and PowerPoint to PDF, so you have to do that before importing those into the application. Liquid Mode enhances your PDF layout to help you go through documents faster. It works with documents that are less than 10 megabytes and or less than 200 pages. Acrobat Reader then creates an outline of your documents from its headings. This creates sections in your documents that you can collapse if you want. And tapping on your images in this layout opens them in a separate window and you can zoom in on them if that's something you need to do. At the moment, liquid mode is strictly limited to just reading your PDFs without annotating on them. It also has system and language limitations, so it's not available on all iPads. You can adjust a few settings to improve how the application displays your text in this mode by changing the font size, character spacing, and line spacing. You can search through your document. The application highlights the search results, so they're easy to find on the page. You can also collaborate on the document, which we'll focus on later on in this video. The pen icon on the bottom right corner activates PDF annotation. On this free version, you can either comment on your PDF or fill and sign it. Adobe Acrobat Reader can recognize the table of contents in your PDF. It just uses an icon we've come to learn as a bookmarking icon. We can't help but feel the outline is better off on the side of the screen than at the top. All the annotation tools in the application, except for comments and the eraser, have similar color options. Nine colors with opacity adjustment. Except text. You can't change these colors, they're fixed, but they work. The app has the basic colors covered, so for PDF annotations, those will suffice. The highlighter neatly highlights your text in a single stroke. It goes behind your text and it is very simple to use. So you can quickly go through your PDF with this setup. The strikeout and underline tools also work in a similar way. Acrobat Reader tracks all your annotations on the right side. For PDF reading, it's better to track pages with annotations than every annotation in the document. The application does this to allow you to make changes to your annotations a bit later. My lasso tool could easily fix that problem so that the application can use this section for something else, like a contents page or page bookmarks, for example. You can also see who made the annotations and when they made them. 
when you don't have enough space, you can write comments on your annotations. Let us know if this is a feature that you find useful where you can comment on your annotations. Text annotations have similar color options. You can also determine their font size. Your text comment goes above your keyboard and you have to post it to add it to the document. Why not just enter it directly on the page? Needing to post a comment you've written just feels like an unnecessary step. You can edit note to add or remove information. You can also reply to the comment, but your replies don't appear on the PDF. If you want some comments on and others off the PDF, this is one way to go about it. For handwritten annotations, the application has seven fixed pen sizes. The pen tool feels like a ballpoint pen. Handwriting feels smooth and pleasant. It has certainly improved over the years. The application, however, has poor selection for handwritten annotations if you want to edit later. This is mostly due to the lack of a lasso tool in the application. You therefore can't precisely select your handwritten notes for editing. You can change the pen color and thickness of your notes. And like with all the other annotations, you can add notes or comments to it. When you can comment on pretty much every annotation on the PDF, it's surprising the application has a dedicated comments tool. It looks different from the other comments icon, not sure if that is helpful. Comments on a document generally are handy when there isn't enough space to write on. You can erase all your annotations from your PDF. It doesn't matter what they are, text, comments, underline, or their replies. It's a quick way to get rid of what you don't need. Whatever changes you make to the PDF, whatever annotations you create, these get added to the document at its original location. So if your document is in Google Drive, for example, the annotations are saved to the document in your drive. This can simplify your workflow and allows you to access your documents from your preferred cloud services. You can search through your PDF in Acrobat Reader. The application sometimes highlights the search results found on the PDF, sometimes it doesn't. It lacks organization for search results to help you with quick navigation. It doesn't even tell you how many search results it found. To collaborate on a document, you can invite people by name or email. You can choose to allow comments and even set a deadline for those comments. You can also just share a link to share with many people instead of inviting each person one at a time. Adobe Acrobat then uploads a copy of the document to Adobe Document Cloud so you can work on it with others. For collaboration, Adobe's annotation tracking system makes sense. It's important to know who made what changes and when they made them. You can mention your team members with the add icon to draw their attention to items on the document, which is awesome. The app lets you choose the annotations you receive notifications for. This comment section should only appear on the documents you're collaborating on, not on all the documents in the application. Acrobat Reader clearly displays Pro features, so you won't accidentally try to use them if you know you're on the free version. On the free version, you can do the following. Send a copy to export a PDF copy of the document. You don't get any options at all on how you export the document. Options like exporting with your annotations, for example. You can star or unstar to mark or unmark documents as favorites. Save to Document Cloud if you want to collaborate on the document. You can save a copy to have a copy of the document in other locations. And you can print. The Home tab displays your recent and start documents. At a glance, you can see documents you're collaborating on, those on your iPad, those in Google Drive, or other cloud services you're signed into. You can display the documents as lists or grids. Selecting multiple documents gives you options to remove them from the recent list. The Files tab shows the documents on your iPad as well as those in other cloud services. Files gives you access to the documents on your iPad, which also gives you access to other cloud services that might not be supported in Acrobat.
You can select multiple documents to move or delete them. You can also create folders in the application and Acrobat Reader supports folders within folders, which means you can organize your documents exactly how you want. The Shared tab is a collection of all the documents you're collaborating on. The application shows you documents you shared and those others shared with you. The last tab on your homepage is for searching your documents. It does not search the contents of your documents, just their names, which is very limiting. Your search results are organized into documents on the iPad, those in your document cloud, and shared ones. The application doesn't have a lot of settings. For more information on the settings you find in Adobe Acrobat, you can go check them out on our website. We'll have a link to it in the description down below. This was just a quick introduction to Adobe Acrobat, the free version for the iPad. It will cover filling forms in the application and its subscription in different videos. We hope you found this video useful. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Thank you, fantastic human, for watching. See you in the next video. Video.